Welcome to Adventures in Solitaire. Today we'll be discussing solo pen and paper role playing. Alright, welcome to Adventures in Solitaire. Uh, this is an overview of solo role playing. What is it and uh, what does it take to get that started? So this will be kind of like a solo RPG portal uh, for the rest of my channel as far as kind of getting into uh, further depth into uh, or like finer detail if you will of uh, various parts of, of solo role playing so um, there's a lot to cover here um, luckily we kind of seem to be in somewhat of a uh, in a bubble somewhere in a uh, solo co-op RPG golden age so uh, whether we're at the cost the summit um, it's kind of yet to be seen where we stand there at least we kind of gonna have to watch and see where that goes so you know when solo rpg uh solo rpgs got their start it was actually when rpgs really got their start with dnd uh dnd was very new and um oftentimes you, you know, like if you were a new player to it there wasn't a lot of people in your community that knew what it was or even people that would be willing to play with you so they released a few solo modules you could play through on your own around about that same time um you know, we had uh, Tunnels and Trolls, which is a direct competitor, and they released a lot of solo content. Um, obviously, we see who won out there was uh, D and D. To discuss solo role playing, I kind of figured I, I wanted to kind of have an idea of wh where is the shallow end and where is the deep end here, because there's there's different uh, there's different le levels of depth that you can go here. So I came up with some terms. They're my own. Uh, maybe somebody might have some some better ones out there, but um, at the lowest, like most shallow, we have guided solo role playing. Somewhere there in the middle, we have open guided uh, solo role playing, and then we have open ended GM simulation. So we're going to start on the shallow end. At the shallow end, we have the guide, guided solo role playing. And so for guided sol solo role playing, uh, we need to start looking at things like game books. So for game books, uh, some good examples would be like the Fabled Land series. Or we have, say, the Destiny Quest series, um, Legendary Kingdoms, of uh, those I don't have access to here in my in my home. Uh, we have uh, uh, like Fighting Fantasy, um, and uh, there, of course, there's many other game books that you can get into. A lot of these game books um, are semi-linear, and uh, some of them are open world. Um, you can have a little bit of both there too. You know, so when we think semi-linear, we start thinking about Fighting Fantasy, Destiny Quest, uh, Lone Wolf. And we start thinking about open world. There's others that are out there, but these are the two uh, kind of dominant ones out there right now. We have Fabled Lands and uh, Legendary uh, Kingdoms. At this point, we should probably, you know, we probably know what game books are if you're watching. Um, you know, if, if not, I will have some videos that will kind of cover game books in, in general later. But the, the pros of these are that they're going to have kind of a simple rules weight. Um, there's, it's not going to be rules heavy at all. You can pick up the rules probably in about five or ten minutes. Um, you can teach them at an even shorter interval, interval probably two to three minutes. Um, actions typically can have consequences. Uh, it just, you know, at least within, it's within the book that you're reading. Um, it depends on the book just how, how those consequences play out. Um, they're almost always very story-driven. So if you like a narrative... This is probably your going to be almost your best bet here. Um, some uh, will even have encounter systems. Both of these have encounter systems built in so that um, as you go through the book and maybe you return to some of the same areas uh, that you've been to before, you have a chance of discovering something maybe you haven't or, uh, you know, running into some some pirates again or, or what ha or maybe running into some bandits again or something similar. The cons to these are typically that they'll have more of a simple uh, leveling system or character growth system. Um, their combat systems tend, tend to be pretty simple in most cases. Not all of them, but most of them will be pretty simple combat. And then the other thing is that you, you tend to have uh, limited campaign choices compared to a typical pen and paper RPG where the GM can truly let that be freeform because this, th these are indeed guided. And so, you know, that, that kind of lends into guided solo role-playing. And that's, for me, that's what these are. It's role-playing that's guided. And from in this category, it just depends on where you want to go. Do you want something that's more open world? Do you want something that flows from book to book? Or just something that sticks within the book? But uh, that's 
this category here. So if this, um, if, if that does it for you, then congratulations. The shallow ends as deep as you need to go. But if you want a little bit more, maybe some more flexibility or freedom, then we're going to have to kind of push this into the next tier. Actually, let's hold that thought. Because within the category of, of, uh, of guided solo role playing games, we kind of need to include something else. Just about forgot. We need to include board games. With board games, um, you're going to have a lot of a, a lot of similarity there. There's going to be some changes, but if you're looking for a solo RPG, these definitely can kind of well, this one in particular can kind of fit that role. Um, so there's some, you know, I'm sure some of you have probably played some RPGs that 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 uh, come in board game format. Maybe you haven't, but the pros to these are is that they're going to have a moderate rule rate. It's not sorry, moderate rule weight, they're not going to be, um, it's not going to be like a, your standard pen and paper RPG with the heavy rules. Some will have encounter systems. Actions can sometimes have consequences. Um, and they generally have a more involved combat system, sometimes a lot more involved co combat system, which some people actually look for. So the cons to this are is that they too will also tend to have simple character or simple leveling and character growth. Um, story can uh, very often will kind of take a bass back seat. They'll give you just enough to have a reason for a dungeon delve, and maybe you'll have some set of consequences or success. But there's no real deep story rolling through the dungeon or, or going between. Generally, there are always exceptions, but that's generally the case. Um, Typically, they're very heavily reliant on combat as their main focus. So you'll have your 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 session where you're going through the dungeon, and there's your combat. And when you're out of that, there's not much there outside of that. I mean, some some games will have a little bit in between the dun the, the dungeon delving, but it's when you compare the amount of time you're spending with pieces on the board fighting each other to what you're doing not fighting, it is heavily combat centered. So if you don't like that that, that iterative, process, iterative process of just spending hours every night pretty much just fighting, then this may not be the best bet for you. They also tend to have limited campaign choices compared to the typical uh, pen and paper RPG, just like the, the, uh, the books do, or the, the game books, and that they're not going to have the uh, flexibility that a, a GM might be able to offer you. But if you like something that's a little heavier in the combat, uh, a little less on the narrative, um, then... This um, is still in that shallow end, if you will, of uh, solo role playing. So now we can get to the next tier, which would be open guided solo role playing. A little bit further down the rabbit hole here. With uh, open guided uh, solo role playing, um, they tend to be a little less linear. They're very often open world. Um, and so some examples of those would be like Ancient Odysseys, Four Against Darkness, D100 Dungeon. Of these, these two are the most uh, common, um, the most well-known. Um, these generally don't have um, a lot of narrative like your game books do. Um, they will also be a little, tend to be a little fight intensive. Um, where there's not a, like very much like the board games, um, they the focus isn't going to be on the narrative and and the experiences in between the dungeons. It's almost always going to be the dungeon and and then building up your your character. These type of books don't typically have entries within them. They um, just have your basic rule set, what you need to play. Um, you'll have pen and paper. You'll typically be mapping out a dungeon on a separate piece of paper. Um, and you'll be rolling on a lot of tables to find out what happens within that dungeon. Um, both of these, um, actually all of these, have an overworld uh, element to them if you um, are willing to get some of the expansions that they have. And that's when these can really grow. So you can literally be going around a, uh, like a, a hex map and where you have towns and forests and dungeons and citadels and and just lots of places to go, encounters and events to have. You can maybe have to deal with hunger and, and starvation and thirst and disease and uh, mounts and all that sort of stuff if you really want to get into this. And in that way, there, there's a lot of freedom. You, you choose when and where you want to go. And some of these will also have campaigns that are um, – 
that they also you can also get for them or you can get like a book of like little one-off adventures or you can get additional rules that help you make your own campaigns really quickly um, they have their own goals and their their own consequences and, and things like that. So this is pretty close to that that experience of uh, of you know a DM and, and and a player. These do this pretty well, and there's a lot of people that that really enjoy these. Because to go any further than this, we really do have to step off the deep end, and the waters become a little bit more murky. Sorry, a little bit more murky and harder to traverse, and there's some struggle there. So, so the pros of these are that they have a moderate to high roll weight. Um, not, I wouldn't say near as high as a true RPG. Um, they do have moderate to in-depth character development for leveling. Um, they are heavily based on encounter systems, which I find is a positive thing. Uh, the more encounters you can have or the chance for encounters is just great. And this includes like enemies, events, locations. Um, actions can sometimes have consequences. It depends on whether or not you have like um, a story going on um, or you, you, bought, uh, you bought an expansion as a story. And they typically have fairly simplistic combat systems. Okay, that can also be a con though because if you want some some moving pieces around the board. That's not going to happen with most of these. The cons of these are they are also typically heavily reliant on combat as a main focus. The story can sometimes take a backseat, and there's limited campaign choices compared to, once again, a pen and paper RPG. They're just not going to be able to give you the freedom and flexibility of a GM. They, they can't, but they do really good, and I think this is a great middle ground to if, if you just don't want to do those books uh, for the, the game books or the interactive fiction, then this for a lot of people is a really comfortable place. And if you're just unsure and, and those don't look good, just you, Four Against Darkness is probably one of the cheapest entries that you can get into. And a lot of people enjoy that. And with a little bit more complexity, you have D100 Dungeon. A lot of people enjoy that. Uh, of, of these, this is one of my favorite. So is this here, especially with me and my fiance. All right. So we have now fully reached the deep end of the proverbial pool. And so we need to talk about open-ended GM simulation here. So with open-ended GM simulation, you are truly trying to simulate a GM to the fullest extent possible. So with that, you're going to need to pick an RPG system. And you can pick D&D. You can pick Tunnels and Trolls. You can pick... Almost any D and like sorry, any role playing system that you want. It's completely up to you. I would, however, argue that you might want to be careful about what system you pick because some systems are better than others. Now, here in my home, I have the Traveler system, also known with offshoots as the Suffius engine. Um, and I have on the way, and this is just a, kind of like a themed book for for this system. But I have on the way hostile the uh, uh, that's based on on this, but it's going to be its own hostile rule set. So these are these are all I have. But both of these are very, 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 very much friendly to the uh, solo role player. Other ones that are very, uh, very uh, friendly to the solo role player, if not absolutely designed for the solo role player, are Iron Sword. Scarlet Heroes, Stars Without Number. So there, there are a few that that are out there that that's their intent. It is so that you you plan on playing that as a as a solo player without a GM. Once you've chosen your your chosen your core rule system, you'll find that you now have a very open playground here. You have a very open palette. Um, it can be very heavy on the story. It can be very heavy on the combat. Um, you can have an ever-evolving campaign, just like an actual pen and paper RPG campaign. It will literally, it, it will only end, typically, when you're ready for it to end. If your character dies, you can start uh, pulling for information to find out what might bring him, bring him back. Does he come back the next day because of XYZ event that you're not aware of? Will he maybe come back in 100 years? You can kind of force that a little bit if you're willing to, to, to game that. So, or, or maybe you just start with a new uh, a, a party with... Um, with this with the same scenario the same story that moves into coming after so truly open there are multiple gm emulators out there that can kind of give you that feedback that a gm might um, the most popular and uh out there is mythic i think there's a solo system as well 
um, for right now, Mythic kind of fits that that uh, that niche for me. Um, it, it has some really awesome uh, mechanics that, that have stayed true to the test of time, and um, it's just really good. So I definitely recommend Mythic. Um, as far as, and you can look for others, um, but as far as open into tools, you're going to need some tools to go with it. Um, one of those that I have in my collection, I have a couple of sets of these, are the uh, Game Master's Apprentice decks. And they are double-sided decks that just have a lot of information on them. Um, you have <clears throat> bad, good, even odds, and whether that's been successful. You have most, if not all, the variable die types that you can draw to the die type or sorry, draw to a card and then find out what the role was. They have different types of icon iconography that mean different things. And you have a really quick, easy cheat sheet that they provide with your deck to tell you what that symbol means. So if you ask a question like, what kind of environment, you know, what am I, what are the, what's the feeling I get here? You can draw a card and you'll get a symbol and you'll look up that symbol and it'll say something and go, oh, so it's that kind of feeling. It also has like, uh, like area stuff, like what you're, he you're hearing, what you're seeing, what, what something might smell like. You have adjectives and verbs. You have belongings you might find, the catalyst to a situ situations, uh, what, what kind of a location someone might be talking about or where you might be, might have just found, what you might have just found. Names, the virtues of, of somebody, vices of somebody. So there's so much information here on these cards that you can randomly pull these up just like you might on a table, ask some questions and get some answers. And with something called a conjecture-based um, system, um, you can get feedback. And I would prefer to, although I prefer to talk about conjecture-based conjecture. Oh my gosh, a conjecture-based system later. I think it's important to talk about that because without conject a conjecture-based system for solo role-playing, it's incredibly difficult, if not impossible, not to involve electronics somehow. So what is a conjecture-based system? Conjecture-based system is pretty, pretty uh, simple idea. It, it takes advantage of our brain and how it works. The overall core number one rule is, is that you must try, do your best to apply logic to the situation. If I find myself in a field and I know that I am out in that field because I'm trying to hunt down bandits, right? And I ask, um, do I see anything out there that looks like there might have been a bandit activity or do I maybe see bandits? I might draw a card, for example, or maybe I'll refer to some other tool that I use because I'm, maybe I'm not using cards. But I'll, I'll roll on that table or I'll pull that card and I might pull up something that says a strike of protest I find on that card. And so I might well say, well, what does that mean, a strike of protest? Well, I'm on somebody else's property. Did I ask to go on their property? No. Oh, so the farmer must have be coming out to protest the fact that I'm on his property. Maybe he's scared that I'm a bandit. And so I, I took literally a small sentence of a strike of protest, compared it to my situation, and tried to come out with a logical situation as to why my, I might be in a situation where I'm a strike of protest. I was on property. I did not ask to be there. There's bandits around. Something striking a protest. Well, it sounds to me like it. I, the logical conclusion of somebody striking a protest is probably because I'm on the property. Oh, yeah, and there's bandits around. I would probably be scared, too, of striking a protest. So that's conjecture. I, I, I made a conjecture that this was what was going on. And it made sense. And it absolutely did. And the, the fun thing about it is, is that um, I didn't know that there was going to be a strike or protest. It wasn't my intent or my desire for there to be a farmer protesting me because there's bandits out there and he's scared that I might be doing something to his land. I didn't, I didn't want that to happen. And that's the beauty of it <clears throat> is that you can literally have anything happen just like a GM. And if you apply some basic logic and you're not, you're not coming out off of it, off the seat of your pants, there is stuff that is pushing you to the conjecture. So you're not playing both sides of the chess table. There's some additional uh, things that you can get to help you along. Uh, if you ever end up in a dungeon, there's things like dungeon dice that you can get. Um, you can buy uh, books with tables, you know, so and there's tons of books out there. I, I mean, there, there's got to be hundreds, if not thousands of these things. Um, I do tend to like uh, Kent David Kelly's information. It's not the best formatted, um, but <clears throat> it still provides a lot of tables, which is great. But we have a game world generator here. We have a classic dungeon design guide. And while these sound like it's hints on how to, how to make these things, 
It is full of tables to randomize this stuff. Both of these are full of world generation randomizers. Uh, in, yeah, uh, we have uh, classic d uh, dungeon design guides, city state encounters for cities, adventure generators. And then a really awesome one is the tomb of adventure design. And this one, by the way, is stock full. This is probably the easiest one to do. Look at this. This is like several hundred pages of tables. You, you almost don't need another book for this unless you just want some more fine detail or just some additional stuff there. But there's so many tables here. And there are other books like this. Other uh, other examples uh, that I don't have with me are like Flex Tales Solo Adventuring Toolkit. That's a big one. Um, there's a deck of tales. Um, I think some people sometimes will use like Rory's uh, Story Cubes. So with this, you can truly have limitless adventures. But as you've seen as I've gone through all this, that's a lot to take in. It's not it's not just pulling out a book and a pen and paper and some dice and going, right? It's not you can't really do that. It takes a significant investment of time. The payoff though with that significant investment of time can be enormous. So what are some of the pros here? Um, we have, you know, some very in-depth character uh, development leveling, just as you would expect in any true pen and paper RPG. It has a heavily based encounter system, like big time it has to. Um, tables and tools that can give you near limitless possibilities. Actions almost always have consequences if done right. The story can take the front seat or combat can take the front seat. It's up to you uh, or, it's, or the story. Um, campaign, oh, I say story or the, the, the tables, um, campaigns can last for as long as you want. It can take a lifetime if needed or wanted. The cons for these are the typically high, high rule weight. The t it's very time intensive to set up and get something started, uh, to learn and, and find your comfort spot with what feels right to you for the tools and rules and their implementation. Uh, combat systems can be... Uh, some time intensive because you are taking a standard pen and paper system and you're trying to apply that to just yourself. Um, and that can take additional tools. You might have to modify the combat system to make it work. Um, and it can be uncomfortable at first. Like you're, you're literally having a conversation with yourself. You're, 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 it's in a way you, it does feel like you're playing both sides of the table where it, it kind of is that way, but it's kind of not. And you have to find that, that space to be comfortable for, with yourself with that. All right, so let's let's have some closing thoughts here. So I'd say compared to say five or even ten years ago, um, there are so many more resources out there now than there used to be. There seems to be a big drive. I know we've had some world events that have helped with that, but even before those world events, that drive seemed to be pushing pretty heavy. Um, there seems to uh, to be um, just in general for the RPG and board game industry uh, to uh, a drive to fill that niche, and it feels like it's been overlooked for too long. We've had stuff out there, but nothing like what we have now. Uh, it's like I'm discovering something new um, in this area on almost a weekly basis. Um, and, you know, as, as stated before, I can't possibly cover everything out there, but I do look forward to covering content as as I can and have the content to do so. So I thank you for listening. Hopefully it kind of helped you make some decisions there. I know I felt pretty lost, um, but I'll try to keep putting content out there for examples and stuff that I can get my hands on that that I think people may like and maybe even have some follow-up videos of how you can kind of mesh some of that together. So for different types of individuals, we can have that set up. So maybe one day someone can go there and go, oh, that feels like me. I think that's the thing I had the hardest uh, uh, time with, but this is where I'm gonna have to start it and hopefully it was helpful. Again, thank you.